welcome back to winemastery.co.uk. My name's John Whiteford, this is... John Murphy. And we're here to tell you all about wine, hopefully help you find the wine, if not the wines, you will absolutely love. Now we've been doing this for nearly two years now, I think actually over two years now. Crikey. Time goes quickly when you're having fun. Mm. Uh, and we were, uh, a couple of emails suggested that perhaps we're going on a little bit, you know, this is supposed to be for beginners, we may be sort of uh, getting ahead of some people. So it would be worthwhile just having a very sort of back to basics introduction to how to taste wine. So very, very, we're taking it very, very easily, very uh, sort of, you know, easy level. We're not trying to get too complicated in this, but just so you've got the basics for being able to appreciate and taste wine. And we're all going to be guided, including myself, by Le Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it when you call me that, John. But yeah, we are going to keep this uh, really quite basic to begin with and just show you how to, how, how, yeah, how to taste wine, what you should be looking for, uh, what pre process you do go through uh, to find that wine or to taste that wine, uh, which then in, in turn will help you enjoy your wine more, we would hope, and then uh, find again that wine that you're going to love. So what we've done is we've gone we've gone for a, we're, we're, wait, I think it relates to both white and red but we've actually gone for a red yeah. today to try um, so should we go for it Let's go for it yeah let's go for it <laughs> ah. <laughs> That was very handy wasn't it Very handy so uh, something we won't be able to do on a podcast No is the first the first thing is sight yeah 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 But yeah the fir the first thing I mean when I, the, the exams I did were through the WSET, which is Wine and Spirit Education Trust, and you did get, the, you know, the, there's a big bit on how, how to um, taste the wine, and because every wine really does taste different, um, there's something different about every single one, so it's finding those tiny little differences. So you've got a lot to go through, and, you, know, you know, as I say, the first is, is the kind of look of it. Um, and it's it's not even the colour to begin with. It's like how how bright it is, okay. as in you know is it, is the wine clear? Is it a bit cloudy? It, does it look thick? Does it look as it bright? Does it does it shine out at you? So you've you've got all that that to look at first. So if we we if we'll take this one and we'll go through the stages. In order to look at it, I mean we're we're just using you know wine glasses that people would normally have in in uh, their cupboards. Yeah. But obviously uh, some people have special glasses for you know for different wines. Yeah. Um, um, does that make a big difference in how you look at the wine or not really? Uh, not in how you look at it, I wouldn't say. Not, not massively. Um, well, to be fair, even in, in the nose and the, the flavour of the wine, you know, these, these different glasses do make a subtle difference to them. And some, you, they are recommended different glasses for, let's say, a Bordeaux, for instance. Um, it does make a subtle difference, but it is very, very subtle. But as beginners, well, I don't, we won't get into that just yet. And I guess as a beginner, you, you wouldn't understand and wouldn't be able to detect those subtleties. So mm. you probably need to be a bit further down the road before you start needing to worry about, do I need to get a special glass for this particular one? Yes, but yeah, I would. I, I'd hold back on that one. Okay, good, good. Sorry to interrupt you. No, 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 don't. you go for it. Wait. It was in full flow then. No, no, you ask questions whenever. Yeah, okay. this, this is what it's about. Right. So we'd look at how bright, dull, or what we'd go for now. For me, that I can see, and it is, it's shining through, it looks very bright to me. I would describe that as a, a bright looking wine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lots of reflections mm. there. Yeah. Yeah, and unfor unfortunately, you, you can't see that on camera. But if, if you were to, you know, have a look at your own glass and see and see if that see if it does look a bit dull, I say a little bit cloudy. But that looks refreshing. Look, yeah. You know, it looks like you're ready to go for it. I have um, to say, the particular one we're looking at is just because we have to choose one as an example. We're using Malbec, aren't we? Yeah. This, this is very dark, isn't it? I mean, compared to some, it's it's, it's quite dark. Yeah. Which that then again leads on to to the next part of it, or, or the actual the actual colour. And okay. of course, you've got a huge spectrum there as well of, of different colours that you, that you can because you know you could go from the the very light um, kind of well we've got some like very right, light rosy colour um, now for instance this one I would say is more kind of garnet garnet ruby colour and then you could get really get down into kind of a, a purple a really rich dark purple um, and most wines you know the characteristics you can tell almost from the colour you, you could do yeah. I can't but you could do when when you when you get when yeah. you get down that line yeah. so yeah so then you would look at so after how bright you then look at the colour and as, yeah as I've said I think that's got that kind of nice deep garnet colour now 
what we are doing here is actually we're, we're getting it from the lights as well, which yeah. can be a lot of people automatically would hold, hold the glass up to the light and have a look. But the, the truer kind of telling of the colour is actually just have a white piece of paper and hold it to the white piece of paper. That, that's, that's the better way of doing it. Um, but for, for today's purposes, we can tell that has got that kind of, say, that garnish, ruby, rich looking again. So, you know, that again, if, if you were... I know when I go out to do the tastings, we have to make notes of absolutely everything. Um, say to make them all different, which they all are, but it's just finding those little small differences. So after, after the colour, we would then go on to the nose. Okay. So oh, to you and me, the smell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, the smells. Yeah, we'll call it that for today, John. <laughs> so now I suppose people don't call it smell. Why people don't call it smell? Because smell sometimes suggests, oh, that smells as it's negative, whereas the nose it sounds it sounds like a bit yeah, yeah. fancy pants, but yeah. it is basically just the smell. Um, and then, which then leads on to when we're talking of tasting wines um, and glasses and glasses, as you mentioned earlier. To really get the nose, um, we need to get the air in the glass and to liven it up a little bit so we can make the most of that nose to get as much as we can from it. So you will often see um, these wine folk just swirling around the glass there. That, it's, it's that simple, that's all you have to do, helps get the air in there, so the, all the aroma is just sitting on, on the top of the glass there. So then you will get your nose right in there and, and give it a good old, give it a, a good old smell. <laughs> yeah, so let's give it a go. Okay, now, some, uh, something, something which can help with this as well is, now, I've just said there, as I've just said, getting your nose in there can really help get right into it, but there, there can also be kind of some subtle little hints as well, because often I'll kind of pull the, pull the glass away, and as you point it away, you pick other little bits up as well, so you get probably the initial kind of smell will be there, and then as you pull it away, just kind of have another little... Sniff and see, see if there is anything more in there. Now, for me, on that nose, I would call that quite plummy, rich and earthy, which is what I would probably expect. But again, so many kind of descriptive words um, for, for the smell, and there's so many, again, this is where it becomes a bit subjective as well. You know, there's a lot of people that can smell something, some people can't smell the others. Um, as I mentioned a few times, it was only on one of the episodes that I managed to smell cat wee yeah. in a Sauvignon for the first time. So again, this is where your opinion counts. It's, it's you tasting the wine, it's your, it's your opinion, so you get what, from that what you can. Sometimes when people do mention that certain aroma, you can sometimes it just clicks in your brain. Sometimes you, ah, that's where it is because it's sometimes difficult yeah, it is. to detect what is in there. So when you do have somebody who's talking about wine um, or a wine expert, and they say, because we've we, we've we've smelled so many wines, we, we know what we're looking for and to pick out in there. So I would I would suggest actually, obviously, people might not have the you know if you're watching this at home and you're trying it with a, a glass of wine, actually don't feel frightened or don't think it, think it's cheating to actually look at uh, you know get a book and or look on the web and see what you should be tasting out of that particular grape because actually it's not cheating it's actually just helping your brain say oh yeah I can smell that or or I can't but um, especially yeah. you in previous episodes if you watched them certainly you John will say something and as soon as he says it my brain recognises but I'm grappling before that but mm. likewise with a book I think if you say these are the sort of things you should be getting, or not should, you could be getting from, uh, then I think it helps you. Uh, massively so. I mean, you know, people who, who talk about wine and, and drink wine and taste wine, that's, that's where we got our knowledge from to begin with. It is reading about wine um, and having a go of it, getting stuck in yourself. And it, it, there's, there are some really, really good books out there and it really does help. Um, but again, for me, it's, it's nearly always been an on-the-job thing, have, having to go see what I find in there. Um, but no, the books in, and the internet's amazing for that kind of thing now, isn't it? It is. So, yeah, don't be afraid to get yourself a book and get stuck in there, because what, as John just said there, when that certain thing picks out, you might just go, that's what that smell is. Yeah, and don't worry if it's only that, you can, quite often John will taste three, four uh, different uh, flavours, and I will only get one, don't worry about it. Mm. It still helps you to, the whole thing of this is helping you to enjoy the wine more, and if it's only one, it doesn't matter, it's probably better than you would have had before. Yeah, yeah, see, because as I'm smelling that more now as well, I don't know, I mean, it won't be really warming up here because we are in the cellar, but as I'm smelling that more, as, as the initial kind of that plumminess and earthiness, I've become acclimatised to that now, so then my nose will pick up other bits and pieces. 
and just uh, sniffing there, I got a little bit of a um, more chocolatey, a little bit of a chocolatey smell in there as well, which which I was very happy with. Hmm. I also heard the the, um, the tip that if you, you're smelling, because for, for me quite often, not so much for John, for me quite often, I smell it a couple of times and I just lose it. I, you know, it might, I become I, I oversensitized, I can't smell it. Someone suggested to me that you actually uh, just smell your forearm um, to, and, and that could... Uh, it oh, does, does help revigorate my nose. But then I've got a very pleasant forearm. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> in, in, in the um, perfume world, isn't it? Perfume yeah. after you, they often have a, a bag of coffee. Okay. And they use that because after, after you smell a fair few, yeah, again, that goes, so they, they use a bag of coffee. Yeah. Never tried that. Okay. Might be worth a go. Okay, so now, and what, one thing you've got to remember as well is just because you're not finding all those things in there. It doesn't necessarily mean that, that all those things are in there because, again, there, there are a lot of times where wine is overcomplicated. Um, and it's not always, sometimes it can be just as, as plain as you can smell raspberries, you can smell strawberries, and that is it. Maybe that is, it would be, which you would describe as a one-dimensional wine. It's not, you know, you don't have to go in there and find five smells in there that you're going to no. get. It's, it's not all. But that, that then would conclude the kind of the, the, the nose of the wine, so we're going from the, from the look of it, from the colour, then the nose, and then of course comes actually tasting the wine. Now, tasting the wine, again, this can, this can be a massive thing, but very basic, to put very basically, what we want to do is we want to get the wine, we want to get it around as much of your mouth as you can, obviously right to the back, right in, uh, at the back of your cheeks here, all over your tongue, and I always say your first taste it's kind of just just um, a practice, just to kind of get your taste buds ready for it, uh, because you don't taste as much as until you get your second taste. Now, then, when we got onto the second one, there's that thing about getting the air rolling through through your mouth. Now, you will often see these wine people who make this slurping noise, and it is I know it is a bit. It sounds a bit odd, it looks a bit odd. It looks a bit pretentious. It does, it does, but honestly, it does massively help. I mean, if, you know, when you're in a party and things and you're just drinking the wine, obviously it's something you wouldn't do, but when you are taking it down to a real tasting and again, looking at every kind of minute difference in every aspect of the tasting, um, uh, taking part in all the tasting parts, you do need, really need to get every edge you can. So that pulling of air in your mouth really does help open up the flavours. So, okay. so we'll have our initial kind of get it around there. Which is fine. Sometimes with it being your first wine as well, it does kind of, it, it doesn't show the true flavour of the, of the grape. So uh, let him do that. Just kind of warms your taste buds up, ready for it. Also, it's getting rid of whatever other taste you may have in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that'll be the first taste. So we'll go ahead and have uh, a second taste. Okay. Okay. Now. Do you, in the taste part now, we've got, this is because of the section of this tasting part. And there are a few bits and pieces that we do, like, would like to touch on here. So you've got the actual flavour, what, what kind of flavours are you getting from it? How, how heavy it feels in your mouth or how, how light it feels, so we, which we call the weightiness. You know, obviously you'll have heard people say it's a very weighty red. And that, that will be when it feels really quite full and thick and, and in your mouth, you know, again, that one that makes your teeth go black. That, that kind of style, that'll be a weighty one. Or you could have the lighter kind of Beaujolais style, which are very easy and almost like, tastes like, I don't know, like um, too, nearly too easy to drink. You've, you've got that. So you've got the flavour, you know, what can you taste in there? So have a... So for me, that moves on. The, the, plumminess, the plumminess I had on the nose, it's actually for me more cherryish in the flavour. More lighter berries, you know, like we were saying, because plum you would say is quite dark, um, and you'd expect a bit of weightiness from that. This is actually, I would say, a little bit more red berry 
a bit lighter than I would have expected, um, but that would be the, that would be the taste. Weightiness, I don't think this is overly heavy. You know, I would say that it sits in the middle compared to. Again, which I, was, I wasn't expecting with the Malbec, I was expecting a bit more weightiness. But that, that's absolutely fine, it's just a style of Malbec. And then, what you look at at the end is the kind of, the length. And this is, like, how, how long that kind of lingers there, how complex the flavour is. Um, you know, because some wines, as we've had many times, where you'll have it and, and it's nearly too easy to drink because it doesn't hang around. It's very swift, it, it's very easy to go, not overly complex. Which again is a style which people like, it's, it's not a particularly bad thing. In fact, it's not a bad thing at all. This one, I would say, sits in the middle, hangs around for a while. There's no, it's not overly powerful. Um, the length in there is, is not too long. Um, no, I think it's what we describe as well balanced. It is well balanced. Everything seems to s sit well. The tannins in there, we've dis we have discussed tannins many times, but that's the dryness, that dry edge, which is nearly, you can't really steer away from them in your red wine. They are there, but it's how well you know, the winemaker um, addresses their, or uses those. And that for me, the tannins are overly apparent, so they're not too stringent, you know, when you get those which do it. And again, it's a style that some people like. It's not for me really, it doesn't really appeal to me. But that is quite soft on its tannins, is how I would describe it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, the tannins, I mean, they're there, but they're not spoiling that wine at all. No, no. So, so, I mean, that, that then gives you an overall, if, if you were to make a little box in all, all these things, we, we spoke about how bright it is, the nose, the flavour, the after flavour, or the length. If you had a box for each one of those, and you were to make a note in each one of these, you really would. The, the wine, although you might taste one one nice, and you make the notes there, you'll taste another one the next night, and if you were to pull it to pieces, you would see just how different each wine is. And then from that, from that itself, you can then mark the wine as to how much, you know, how, how you would score it, as we've been doing in, in these latter es episodes. So, but that would then score it to suit you. Yes. As, as such. So then you can make, and a lot of people do, make kind of little diaries of the wines they've had, the wines they like, uh, or wines they'd want to discover, or wines they've liked, so where do they go from there? Which is a little bit like what we're doing. And there's also apps that you can do that with now. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of score and it just keeps a record and, and actually goes into the main database so you can see everyone else's scoring and whether they think the same uh, as you, if you want to do that. We're living in the future, John. Hey, hey. But yeah, that, that kind of covers, um, I believe, unless I've left anything out there. I don't think, I think that covers that. it. I mean, I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll do one on white wine as well, because, you know, if you're uh, into, into, not into red wine at all, you may find uh, this a little bit, well, you know, I'm not going to get over white wines, so how do I taste white wine? So, in a couple of episodes, we'll, we'll, we'll also do one on white wine, which is, yeah. obviously, the basics will be very much the same, yeah. which is probably looking for slightly different things. Yeah, we might do, we'll, we'll, we might up a little bit on, up, up for the, um, uh, for the white, and just uh, throw a few more little bits in there, which you know, which will just yeah. take us away from the basic. But some, you know, it'd be the gradual way to go. Excellent, super, mm. wonderful. It was a nice Malbec as well, actually, John. Thank Very you. nice Malbec. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Okay. Well, fantastic. I say. Well, in a couple of episodes, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at a white, and John will go a little bit more into detail for those of you that want to just take it there a little bit further. Uh, in the meantime, I hope this has given you uh, some ideas about uh, t tasting wine and uh, give it a try. I'm sure you'll enjoy. It. Cheers. Chin chin. Chin chin.